So, some time has passed since 4.0's launch, and I think we are now living in probably the best timeline when it comes to spending resin in Genshin. But surprisingly enough, I've seen some new big traps that you can fall for even after years of playing this game. So in this video, I want to talk about the actual best ways you can spend that sweet sweet resin in 4.0 update, and how you can now build really strong characters by utilizing the resin in a smart way. So, I think it's easy to get distracted by the shiny new domain in Fontaine, because I'll be real, the Golden Troop set is an amazing artifact set that you can farm for Fischl, Yamiko, Hazo, and even Geo Traveler, who, believe it or not, seems to be in a better spot than the new Hydro Traveler. And the thing is, for Fischl, this is an undisputed best in slot choice. Like, seriously, after dumping thousands of resin into the new domain and still ending up with pretty mediocre subset rolls, she now hits for like 60k with her skill in a fully buffed aggravate team, and then Oz keeps shooting for tons of damage damage afterwards, which is really cool. And the same goes for Yai Miko. While something like Gilded Dreams and Aggravate Teams is a close contender, the new Golden Troop set is amazing for her if you only utilize her skill in team rotations. But the reality is, this domain is still pretty niche with all things considered. Because the Hunter set is basically only good for Linny, Xiao and Dia, but all of them have great if not better alternatives. For example, Dia has a massive energy problem, so Emblem 4 set is just straight up better for her. Despite the 36% crit rate you could obtain otherwise from the Hunter set, while Xiao can either farm for Vermilion or start gambling it for it from the strong box. As for Linny, yeah, it is his best in slot, but he can still utilize sets like Wanderer's Troop or Lava Walker really well. So, what am I trying to say here? I think that at the moment, this new domain is at best good for a few characters only, and unless you follow the rumors closely and are really dedicated to preparing for future characters in advance, then I would say it's not worth burning the resin here, at least for now. I know I just told you a minute ago that I basically burned about 7000 resin, and I did end up with a couple of really nice drops, but ultimately, there's 74 different characters in the game. And yes, I am counting each different traveler element. So if you think about it, if you go into this domain, you're essentially farming the sets for like, what, 5 or 6 characters? I understand that not everyone's account is the same, and it always depends who you're building at the current time. But what if I told you that there's a better way that you can spend the resin and farm artifacts for up to 34 different characters instead? Well, let's talk about it in this next part. But before we do this, this video is sponsored by Tower of God New World. And this is a new 3D free-to-play mobile game based on the massively successful Webtoon series. If you're a fan of Tower of God, this game expands on the original story. But if you're new to this, you can easily jump into the game thanks to the amazing amazing animation cutscenes. What I love about this game is that it has some of my favorite characters who can unleash epic ultimates and skills. While the gameplay is sort of like a mix between strategy and auto chess combat, where the characters' roles and elements feel super engaging. With over 70 characters to collect, there's a ton of different teams you can build with even the lowest rarity units. So the game is free to play friendly, and what's even better, you can get a guaranteed SSR rarity character with every 100 pulls. This means you can pick any SSR character. And team building consists of elements, synergies, character placements, and so much more, so every choice you make matters when you're climbing the tower. But watch out, the Summerfest event is here, and with it comes new characters, new summer costumes, and a lot of free rewards that you can obtain. So make sure to smash my link in the description, help support my channel, and start playing Tower of God New World now! So, what is the best way, at least for now, to spend the resin? Well, the answer is pretty simple, thanks to the new changes to the Artifact Strongbox. Now, normally, some of your resin usually gets spent on ley lines and weekly bosses. But the longer you play, the more resources you start hoarding. Experience books, mora, weapon and skill materials, all of these things can be acquired slowly from events. The only things that we do not get from events are the weekly boss material drops. So, if you're a veteran, the resin pretty much gets spent on artifact domains. And right now, if you just go and burn the resin in the deep wood and Gilded Dreams domain, you can obtain artifact pieces for up to 23 different characters. And you can see here from this list that a lot of them utilize Gilded Dreams. In fact, it's probably the most versatile set for tons of different Dendro teams. But the artifact pieces can also be used in Reverse Vape, like Rosaria here, who can utilize Gilded Dreams and hit for a ton of damage, thanks to the insane amount of EM you can obtain from the 4 set. But yeah, Lisa with Gilded Dreams can be used in Aggravate teams, Barbara can use it in Elo Bloom teams, Thundering Fury Razor in the niche team with C6 Benny, and so so, so many Hyperbloom users. You could argue that Flopset is better for any Hyperbloom or Burgeon damage dealer, but the thing is, it's located in a domain with Desert Pavilion set, and honestly, it's an extremely niche set that only few characters like Wanderer can fully utilize it. What's also amazing about Gilded Dreams is that Bloom teams in general have a very low entry cost to build strong meta teams, and it's not even about that. Like, dealing a lot of damage is just a fun way to explore Genshin maps and have fun deleting enemies with few Hyperblooms or Burgeon explosions. Not only is this domain free to play 
gameplay friendly, but even the Deepwood Force set can be utilized by a lot of different characters, like Tignati if he is the only Dendro damage dealer in the team, Kave if he is the Dendro driver, or even Zhongli. Yes, you heard it right. If you position his pillars in the correct way, he can be an amazing Deepwood user in teams like Aggravate or Hyperbloom. But you're probably wondering, why am I sharing this almost one year old info? It's pretty clear that this domain is really good and can be utilized by a ton of different characters. Well, it all has to do with the artifact strongbox, because you will get a ton of crappy pieces when you're farming for Deepwood or Gilded Dreams. So anything that's a bad 5 star drop, you can just feed it to the strongbox and hope for the best. But then, for which artifact sets do you gamble for from the strongbox? Well, I think the easiest answer here would be the Emblem of Severed Fate. I was actually going through all the characters that can benefit from this set, and to my surprise, there weren't as many as I thought there would be. But 11 characters who basically treat this set as their best in slot is still a lot. And this is where the number comes from when I talk about farming for essentially 34 different characters. You go to the Sumeru domain that doesn't have those artifacts in the strongbox yet, you spend the resin to obtain artifacts for 23 different characters, and for a lot of them, either Gilded or Deepwood is best in slot, and then any bad 5 star drops you get, you feed it to the strongbox to try and get something good for the other 11 characters. For example, you might be wondering why would Kali need Emblem Force set? Well, in Nilo Bloom team comps, this is actually a really good set for her, as she can dish out good amount of damage together with her skill and burst, while at the same time, the extra energy recharge she gets from the 2 set and hopefully subset rolls makes it easy to have the burst ready on the go. And I don't even have to tell you how extremely valuable the Emblem set is for Shangling, Beto, Shin Cho, Raiden, and Dia. This is what you want to equip on them when building teams. Heck, even Chong Yun, who is often forgotten, can make use of the Emblem Force set pretty well if you want to build for the best personal damage that comes from his burst. Like seriously, I think we're now living in the best possible timeline when it comes to spending resin for artifacts. And I know the RNG is still out there to punish us with those defense rolls, but come on. Previously, the Strongbox had some good sets like Noblesse and Verdes and Venerir, but now, you can obtain Emblem and Tenacity, both of which are amazing for many characters. And like, let's say you have a Dendro team you want to build while the other is Mono Geo, you can still go and farm the Sumeru domain, while the bad drops can be gambled for Husk, which then can be utilized by Ito, Noel, and Albedo. Basically, by farming the Gilded and Deepwood artifacts, you can throw in the bad pieces into the strongbox and try your luck obtaining good emblem drops, and that allows you to farm for nearly half the characters in the game. But what's even better, sets like Thundering Fury, Lava Walker, Crimson Witch, Blizzard Strayer, Vermilion, all of these niche artifact sets could be obtained from the strongbox instead, if you don't care about emblem. But there is one exception here. What if you don't care about dendro teams at all? I mean, kudos for you if you're an old school player that prefers vape, melt, and electro charge teams. And in that case, you can pretty much just farm any domain that comes to mind, and use the strongbox however you want. But I would say going back to the emblem domain would be a good place then, since a lot of these teams still need emblem to work super well. However, in the end, if you are keen on just farming the new domain because you want to prepare for the new upcoming characters, then nothing's stopping you. You could always throw in the bad pieces into the strongbox for more specific builds, and essentially, there is no wrong way to play this game because, after all, the only real challenge is the abyss, although if anything that proves people care about power, then it would be the extra constellations. Genshin wouldn't be printing money if people didn't want to maximize their favorite character's damage or potential, so choosing the right domain to spend resin is something to consider if you want to hit for those big numbers. And for a generalist approach, there is no better way to do this than just farming the Sumeru domain while gambling with the bad pieces from the strongbox for something else. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and I would really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm honestly really happy with the current state of artifact farming, despite the fact RNG wants me to suffer, but I do get a couple of good pieces here and there, but the fact that I can now farm for so many characters is really making me glad I can do this. But yeah, thanks for watching the video, and see you next time.